to be, be really mindful of that sort of a thing. So b given the fact that we'll assume everyone here does shake hands, your standard American handshake, it's the web to web, the palm palm, a count one, two, or a shake, shake, one, two, and then you let go. <laughs> you don't keep going. <laughs> so a couple different things that I want you to think about, and also this is a gender thing, is that you guys shake hands all the time. You shake hands before the beer. You shake hands after the beer. You shake hands before the game. You shake hands at the end of the game. Women, we shake hands the first time we meet each other. After that, we kind of stand there. <laughs> if we get to be buddies, we start hugging or kissing. <laughs> and this is way too confusing for men, one. <laughs> and two, it just should be business gender neutral. It's just a handshake. But for women, we, it feel, handshakes feel formal for us. You guys, I mean, you guys shake hands at the end of a PTA meeting. You shake hands when you say hi on the street or goodbye. It just seems weird for us. It's formal. But, you know, you can't imagine, men can't imagine not shaking hands. So part of what also happens is in senior executive situations, truthfully, women are supposed to put your hand out first. And the reason you're supposed to put your hand out first is it goes back to Victorian times when you are allowed to touch me. <laughs> and it goes back to that kind of, you know, curtsy kind of a handshake. And this is really actually proper etiquette sort of things. But you ladies, you need to know you need to put your hand out first. Because men are going to be told, don't put your hand out first. You're supposed to wait for the women. Women are thinking, I'm junior to you, so I should be waiting for you. And you have this kind of weird standoff thing. So when we take a quick break in about a half an hour or so, I want you to practice a whole bunch of handshakes. And here's the thing. If you get a handshake that's not great, this is a feedback time. It's not a criticism time. It's a feedback time. Because you don't want people walking around saying, my god, they graduated from that program, and they have a bad handshake. <laughs> How can they be so smart and da-da-da? The sweaty handshakes. Here's the trick on the sweaty handshakes, and here's what you do. If you have a sweaty handshake or you know somebody who has a sweaty handshake, you tell them, just carry a bottle or a glass of water in their right hand. And then you can say, I am so sorry that water of that, hand, that glass was all wet. And he has no idea. <laughs> no idea. And so often the sweaty hand people are nervous. And what happens is if they do that over and over again, they realize their nerves are gone. So, and then we also have the Bill Clinton handshake. How are you? <laughs> and you have a little bit of the two against one. Or you have the church lady handshake. God needs to see you every Sunday, dear. Every Sunday, God needs to see you. <laughs> so when I'm in the South, I just roll with it because it's a cultural thing. But here in the North, so again, part of you wants to kind of know what's going to make you feel most comfortable. And as you go into meetings and you go into one-on-one -on -one with these incredibly executive folks, you don't want them to remember your handshake. I mean, if, actually, you want your handshake to be completely forgettable. <laughs> you know, because if it's memorable, there's an issue. Yes? It's one of those things that's a tough one. You know, all I can say is that after you shake their hand, maybe go back and wash your hands. <laughs> Um, you know, it is a tough thing, but you know, I mean, in general, it, it's, it, it is, it's a good question. At the same point, we can't police each other. Um, you know, some, there was a woman who actually I work with and she was Miss Clean and one time she was walking out of the ladies room after washing her hands. I said, you cannot be Miss Clean. Go back in there and wash your hands. And I just made fun with it. I mean, I, I made it a light moment. Um, I don't know if she always never washed her hands and I kind of didn't want to know. Um, but it is, an, it's in during cold season, it's a tough one. Sometimes I'll say, you know what, cold's over, but I'm still not shaking hands. And most people say, thank you. Um, you could have a little Purell thing, you know, in your briefcase. We'll talk in a minute about having, you know, a, a kind of a networking kit that you'll take with you, um, you know, whenever you go into these situations. Any other quick question about the handshakes? Yes. I've seen your handshake in a male's hand. Sometimes they give you that courtesy. The girl, the girl shake. Yes. What I, and because I teach this, here's what I do. I will say, you know what? I bet you didn't know. It bugs us women when we get the girl handshake because I saw you give him a guy handshake. It's okay to give me the guy handshake. Um, it depends. And, and what I will share with you in your group, you can share that. You may or may not want to share this when you're in you know, a fundraising event. <laughs> you, know, you need to know the person. You know, but sometimes you just kind of can say that. Yes. Yeah. So, 
And the flip side of it was that, you know what? I bet you didn't know. You left quite a mark. My God, my hand's almost broken here. You might want to know. You could lighten up a little bit. I actually, it's more easier to tell them about the lighten up than it is, you know. And there's actually two people here in Boston who work for the same company. A guy who's a former football player who gives me the wimpiest handshake and one of his salespeople who's this petite little thing and she crunches my fingers and I finally got the courage recently to tell her, you, you nearly killed my hand, you know. And she was like, why didn't you tell me before? That was her answer. Why didn't you tell me before? So is if you're kind about it and you're kind of lighthearted about it, um, you know, that's, oh, also one, one last thing, because we are, when you do get into the international community, we get, we get into the kissers. Do I have a volunteer? I won't kiss you. Come on up. So if you want to avoid the kissers, <laughs> and so if he's going to come in for the kiss, what I simply do is say, it's so nice to see you, and he just stops right there. He does, he's not going to come any closer. So if you're in your situation where a kiss would, could be awkward, it, you know, you, you, this, that's something that you can do. So we'll do the reverse. I'll come in for to kiss you, and you can stop me. All right? <laughs> so this is why you want to practice here. <laughs> so you put your hand right here. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Ready to stop you. You're ready to stop me. He really wants to stop me. So part, this is why, again, you want to practice. <laughs> but in many cases, these are the things, because if you are, have a, say, say, give him a round of applause. Say thank you. <clears throat> because if you are in a situation where it's going to be awkward, you know, and in, that's what you have in some cases is you see people in certain situations. You're off-site, you're all buddies, you have a good time, you know, blah, blah, blah. I mean, I'm not saying anything's inappropriate. You just have a sense of community. And when you leave in a few weeks from your boot camp, you're going to have that sense of community. Well, but then when you're also maybe meeting on the trading floor is not the time you kind of want to have that kiss or sort of be like, I haven't seen you in 10 years. Oh, wow, you know, let's kiss. So, you know, it kind of, what, what I'm saying is that it's the circumstances that are going to, in some cases, dictate a few of these things. And you want to be kind of prepared to kind of control the situation so it's not going to be awkward. Mind you, when you're, you know, when you're in Rome, do as the Romans. You know, if you're in Europe and they do a lot of kissing over there, you want to, you know, be thoughtful about that. I went to high school in Thailand, so we had a different greeting there. So in some cases, you just kind of want to go with it. All right, let me just continue with this, and then we'll move on to the one-on-one. -on -one. We're going to practice your handshakes and some good things like that. Business cards. You're going to want to have business cards, and you're going to want to have them prepared. So when you're in a situation at a networking event, you don't want to have to open up your computer bag or your briefcase or go do an excavation in your wallet. <laughs> You want to be completely prepared so that you can exchange cards. If you are going to be dealing with the international community, you want to kind of research if there's different ways for the cards to get exchanged in different cultures, which is going to be something that's important to do. Um, also, one of the things that I can tell you that I really like is when I'm meeting people, either at an event or a one-on-one, -on -one, if, I'm, if, if, I'm, if they're sharing a whole lot of information, my gosh, it's the greatest gift in the world. They're giving me a reason to follow up. It's my job to follow up with them and say, Courtney, here's the things we talked about. You mentioned you had these three introductions. Or you mentioned you know a great restaurant in Boston. Or you mentioned you know a great place, someone I should contact when I'm out in San Francisco. It's my job to follow up with Courtney. Even though she said, oh, well, let me give you this information. So when you're dealing with these senior executives, it's your job to follow up with them and say, thank you so much for your time, and here's the things we mentioned. And in many cases, the people you're going to be interacting with are their assistants, your golden ticket to life, <laughs> your absolute golden ticket to life. And one of my favorite stories I heard actually at the American Bar Association was the former general counsel of um, Dell. She went into a law firm, and she was really kind of looking forward to her next venture. And there was a possibility for her being the general counsel at Starbucks, and she was all jazzed about this opportunity. She was one of the three finalists. She was all jazzed about this. She'd done the interviews. They vetted her out, whole nine yards. She gets the job. She's all excited. She goes to the office at the first day, and there's this big tin of cookies. And she goes, wow, isn't that nice? I now knew I was going to get coffee. I didn't know I was going to get cookies. She opens up the tin of cookies, and it says, congratulations on your new job, Doc Spady. Well, Doc Spady was the male guy in her law firm. She was like, of all the people to take the time to send me a gift, what about those clients who I worked really hard for? <laughs> well, that was so nice of Doc Spady, but she still felt there was something...